welcome to episode two of my summer garden tour. It's lovely to have you again. Uh, if you've already seen episode one, you'll have seen that I've already shared the colour that I have growing in my tropical styled UK garden. And as I mentioned, I've chopped the tour into a few episodes to stop the video being too long and also to enable me to concentrate on various elements of the garden in each video. For this video, I'll be concentrating on the large leaved plants that I have growing in this garden. And the jungle garden is just incomplete without some form of large leaves growing. And I have a few in this garden that I'd like to share with you. Off, we have the Colocasia escalenta. I planted this as a bulb in the spring and I'll link the video top right for you. I decided to leave this in the pot for the first year just so that I could see how it gets on and as you can see the leaves are quite big indeed. I plan to overwinter it indoors and to plant it out next year in the border just to see how it sizes up in the ground. It's the largest Colocasia that I've been able to grow this year. So next we have the magnificent Musa Basju, one of the hardiest banana plants that we can grow here in the UK and it surely doesn't disappoint. I love this plant, the size of the leaves on it, even when the wind has had a good go at them, it just adds to their authenticity. They are beautiful, these paddle-like leaves. Um, I really, really love the way that it grows. It pushes out a new leaf pretty much each week, if not each week and a half. Now this one, following on from winter 2022 as i'm sure uh, many of you who grow musa will have found the winter cut the main stem of my main plant all the way down to the ground now that had reached nearly to the top of the fence i was so pleased with it i was sure that this year i'd be having a, 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 a musa that would be towering over my head but uh, the winter had other plans however uh, there was no need for me to worry too much about that because this that you're seeing here this main moussa plant here in the middle was a pup uh, and i think on a previous video i showed you um, when it was just just started to poke through the ground and as you can see here not only has it nearly reached the same size as its mother plant but there are some other pups to the left and right of it as well. I have in this area, and I exaggerate not, at least 12 banana plants. Now I did plant a smaller one, which is this one that you see here uh, in the springtime. And um, that's done really well in this area as well. So I was thinking I really need to replace my other one. But um, this has also thrown some pups. Now, because this area is so densely planted, it's not that easy to show you all of them. But you'll just have to believe me. You can see some of the foliage down there. There are at least 12 banana plants growing in this area. This one alone has given me about eight. So with the one that died, or rather the one that was cut right down, um, you know, it's root hardy and it has given me an abundance of banana plants which eventually I will protect and, and perhaps put around the garden and share with family and friends. So yeah, the Musa Basju, it is just magnificent. A great plant for a jungle style planting scheme. It's a fast grower, it's a tall grower and if it is cut down by the winter, don't worry at all, it will come back. So there you go. Musa Basju. Now poking out from under the Musa Basju in my border I also have some cannas which I've already talked about in the first episode but worth mentioning that cannas also grow pretty large banana like leaves so if you want a bit of a contrast um, as I have here with the canna Happy, Happy Wilma you can get these large paddle like leaves on a canna plant as well one of my favourite additions to the garden, one of the largest rhododendrons you can grow here in the UK. The rhododendron swell and hensi. Not very easy to get a hold of and whenever I've looked for another one they've been out of stock. But this one, it has creamy flowers in the April and it's considered hardier than the other large leaved rhododendrons you can get. It's supposed to be able to grow into a large tree in the right conditions and currently I have this planted in acidic ericaceous soil which it prefers and it should be able to reach a height of about 150 to 175 centimeters 
within the next 10 years or so. So moving along in this border, in terms of large leaves, I also have the Insetti Morellii growing here. Now, I do believe that I planted this in the wrong place this year. Uh, it's now competing heavily with uh, my Dixonia Antarctica tree fern and it is affecting the way in which it's growing. I do try and move the tree fern fronds out of the way. But regardless of the fact that I planted it in the wrong place, you can still see uh, the majestic leaves that grow from this, how big they are, the deep red colour. Um, I did overwinter this successfully. I'll share the link in the top right for you so that you can see that. Um, it wasn't that difficult to do and I plan to do exactly the same thing again as it kept um, my Ancetti well over the winter period. Um, if in future, I think I may need to plant it in a pot or find another area, perhaps take away a bit more of the lawn. Hopefully hubby won't mind too much in order to get that planted somewhere where it can really spread those leaves and, and show off a little bit. But there's the Ancetti Morellii beautiful large pattern like leaves again setting off the jungle theme but um, when you do plant it make sure it's got lots of room to do its thing. I'm going to mention my Fatsia japonica the one that I have growing in this mainly shaded area again it's getting morning sun and I'm filming this first thing in the morning but this is the biggest I'd say I've ever seen my Fatsia leaves and I think, again, it's to do with placage. It's to do with the water that we've had. Um, the Fatsia japonica this year has been very fast growing. Uh, the majority of the leaves that you can see at the top of this uh, sprouted this year in this season. Um, and yeah, I'm going to include it here because look at that. They are quite big. I've got almost several Fatsias across the garden. Um, one on the patio which is in a pot and the leaves are about half the size probably even a third of the size of these so in the right spot in the shade under a canopy if you can get it there and um, which it is in this garden the fatsias can really put on weight and these leaves are huge and definitely jungle like now fatsias are available pretty much anywhere and the price point is also good for the pocket so if you're without a fatsia and you're looking for something that grows fast that grows large and that has big jungly leaves and work in the shade i highly recommend the fatsia japonica and the plan for this one is eventually to shred some of those lower leaves off so that I can underplant it and this itself will form a lovely canopy next to my red robin there. So yeah, the Fatsia Japonica. Now just down from my Insetta, I have a Brunnera. Now, not traditionally known as a large leaved jungle plant as such, but I mention it here because this is the largest that the leaves have grown for me. I don't know if it's because of all the rain that we've had, um, but this plant has simply sat here showing off since spring. Uh, the leaves got big pretty quickly. We had the beautiful blue flowers. A few are now um, re-blooming there. But this Brunnera has been magnificent. It's just held its spot there. And the leaves, as I say, have never been this big for me. I'd like to mention this one growing next to it, the Melianthus Major. Now look at that, look at those serrated edges. Now this has been given since spring, it won't stop. I bought it as a tiny little plant and it's just been abundant in its growth. And they do grow a lot larger than I expected as well in one season. So for that beautiful serrated edge on those leaves and for a plant that grows quickly and comes back each year, there's another large leaved plant that I would recommend that fits in beautifully amongst all the others. So I'm going to take you now to my side border that's just on the left of my patio. And over here we have plants that have the propensity to grow large, but aren't large as yet for a variety of reasons. So we have here the Colocasia white lava and 
this hasn't grown as fast as I was hoping. I did grow it from bulb just as I did the Escalenta that I showed you earlier on in the video. Um, but I originally had this over in the shade. I've moved it to this border now as later on this will get the majority of sun for the longest period. But you can see the white vein coming through in the middle, which is great. And I'm hoping that I will get um, a good show from these before we hit the uh, late autumn and winter. So I'll put them there in the hopes that I'll get that. And just to the right, if you've seen my video where I talk about getting the Gunnar and Manicata bug, <laughs> I planted a Gunnar in this space. I know, I know, I know that this is not going to be the ideal place for it. I have nowhere else and I really wanted to plant it somewhere. So I've popped it there just to get it started. Now it's already put on quite a bit of weight since I planted it. Not quite um, the huge size it can reach, but I know that by the time we hit late autumn, before I need to protect it, it's going to be huge, even if just this leaf alone. So it's a bit of an experiment. How large can it get in my small garden? I don't know, but we will see. And if I need to move it, I'll move it, no problem. But it's already starting to show me what it can do. Now in this pot that I have over here, I have two plants, the Petocytus japonicus or butterbur plant and the genus of Tetrapanax, not the Rex I think, both of which have been underwhelming in terms of the size of leaf that I expected. Now that could be due to the fact that they're in a pot and the fact that they're planted together and both would definitely do better in the ground but my board is so full, I planted them here hoping for some good yield. I'll move them next year. Now last but not least for this video, you'll have heard me mention earlier the Tetrapanax rex and if you look in my garden you cannot see where one is in this border. The reason for that is winter 22. <laughs> Again, it cut my Tetrapanax all the way down and it did not reshoot from the main stem. Um, I was really worried that I'd lost it and I was excited to see the leaves come back and they just didn't. However, Tetrapanax being Tetrapanax. Did it give up? No. Here is my main stem just under there but we have some pups growing around it. The caterpillars have enjoyed them as well. Uh, so they're not big at the moment. They're still babies and I don't know how large they'll get by the end of the season but to know that this didn't die is great news. We've got new leaves shooting there as well. So don't give up hope on your Tetrapanax Rex if that also gets cut down by the winter. In terms of the large leaves I have growing here, that's about it for this one. So it just goes to show in a small garden, which is still largely used by my children to play in, you can still get some large leaves going and large leaves are perfect in a tropical style planting scheme. In the next episode, I'll be sharing with you the trees that I have growing in this garden, including my palms. I'll also take you through the bamboo that I have and the tall structural elements that I have, such as this grass here. So I look forward to seeing you on the next one.